Welcome to Worship with Plymouth Park United Methodist Church. My name is Marcus Womack. I'm pastor here. This weekend, we observe Epiphany, that journey of the Magi to the Christ child who followed a star in the night sky. And so I wanted to invite us to experience that story underneath the stars from my perspective in worship today. Today you'll see music led from our sanctuary, pieces of the service led from other people's homes, and I will be here uh, outside of my house as well. It's a joy to worship with you today, no matter where you are. As we often say, we're more complete because you are here. We hope you'll let us know that you're here by leaving a comment on Facebook, uh, maybe showing us what worship is like for you, maybe lighting a candle as we are gathered around the light of Christ, that you might be gathered in light in a season that has so much uncertainty or darkness in it. We also hope that if you're worshiping through our website, you let us know how you're doing as well. As always, if there are ways we can be supporting you as your church family, we hope you will let us know so that we can be supporting you as best as we can. Now, let us enter into this time of epiphany, the light of Christ into the darkness of our world, as we prepare our hearts, minds, and lives for worship together.
Will you please join me in the call to worship? The Magi waited and watched, knowing something wondrous would be happening. We waited for the birth of Jesus. Now something wondrous is about to take root. The darkness that invaded all lives was banished by the light of that star. The darkness that surrounds us is gone. Let us celebrate the bright shining of God's love in our lives. Let us become those who will bring the light of God's love to others. Amen. to our time of prayer today. This is going to be our last week where I invite you to check the ongoing prayer concerns, those in need of health and healing, those who are in need of our prayers of sympathy. If you would check that in your church email, we will be back to announcing those in our weekly worship soon. But I invite you now to turn your attention to God who knows who is in need of prayer. 
to God who cares and is with those that we love, those that we know are in need. We also know God is with those who are celebrating the joyous occasions. If the new year is bringing you good news, we praise God for all that God has done. As we pray today, I invite you to take a moment of silence, to be in God's presence how you need to be today. I'm standing outside, you might be able to hear my dog exploring or the planes passing overhead or the wind blowing by. Wherever you are, take a moment, take a breath. God is with you. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, by the light of a star, the people of earth found their way to your side. As the Magi experience your glory and the Christ child, lead us, those who know you by faith, into your presence so that we might see your glory face to face. Transform our sadness into joy, our sorrow into hope, our mourning into praise. Lord, it is hard to live by your patience. Your timing is not our timing, and your ways are not our ways. Keep us from trying to rush peace and prepare us for the peace that comes through discipline and perseverance. Set our eyes and our hope on your steadfast love. Lord, we ask you to tend the sick, to bless the dying, to soothe the suffering, to pity the afflicted, to shield the joyous. Remind us each day that our common life depends on one another. As we join our voices together from where we are to pray the words that you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, Krista. Yeah? It's getting to that time of year. You What's know what time? What time of year is that? It's New Year's resolution. Oh, the New Year's resolution. Do you have a New Year's resolution for the year 2021? Okay, Jack. So I think my New Year's resolutions will be to read more okay to have more alone time with god okay and to ride my peloton oh okay four days a week four days so let's go four. Okay. how about okay. you what are your, your resolutions i think my resolutions are going to be to spend more time in prayer good good and as long as the pandemic lasts just to get outside more and get more fresh air i like that one I like the fresh air part. Maybe I need to add that one to mine too. Yeah, yeah. But you know, something that I've noticed that? is that every single year I try to like continue my resolutions throughout the whole year and I never can accomplish it. Ugh, me neither. I think that I've tried to give up Dr. Pepper like every year since I've since I can even remember, yeah. but I never have a good plan. So then all of a sudden there's nothing good to drink in the house. I mean, except water, cause water's really good for you. But, um, and then I'm drinking Dr. Pepper again. Yeah, yeah, same here. You know, as I think about that, I wonder if the reason why we never follow through is cause we really just don't like look at the steps that are required That's and like one. really make like a really like step-by-step step of how we're going to accomplish this resolution. Right, kind of like setting a goal. So if you don't have a plan in place, you're not gonna succeed. Yeah. Almost like maybe a good recipe. Yeah, yeah. I think if you, in order to achieve the recipe, you have to start with something like a foundation of the recipe. You have to start with like the right tools. Right. And the right like ingredients. And you have to work your way up. You can't just throw everything in uh, at least not in all dishes, and expect it to turn out as like a wonderful cake or pie or something. Absolutely. So, I mean, if you went to the fridge and you were like, oh, I've got ranch dressing and some leftover cake and maybe like some mushrooms and anchovies, like that's not a good no, recipe. 
No. You gotta you gotta make a plan. You gotta have a good start. Yeah, and you gotta work at it continually. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that um, that could apply to our faith. Yeah, I think so. I think so. You got a good foundation, and you have the right tools, and a good filling, and something to put on top that's gooey. Like that could apply to our faith. Yeah, I, you know, I think that's something that we can all apply to our faith in the year 2021. That could be a resolution for all of us here at the church is to like help uh, create a better faith within each one of us because we can yeah. always grow in our faith no matter what. And so if we really plan it out step by step of how we're gonna grow our faith. I like that, I think Jack. that'd be good. And I kind of think that that sounds like a really cool cooking show. Ooh. I think it does. Where we're building from a recipe into building our faith. Yeah. Hmm. Step by step, ingredient by ingredient. Could be. Yeah, I like that. Could be a good one coming soon yeah. to PPUMC. Coming soon. <laughs> so yeah, we hope you have a great new year. Um, and we hope that we get to see you soon here at Plymouth Park. Um, if there are ways that we can be praying for you, um, families, please let Krista and I know. Um, but yeah, we hope to, and we're excited to see what the year 2021 has in store for us here Absolutely. at Plymouth Park. So Absolutely. should we pray? I think we should. All right, let's pray. Oh God, we're grateful for all the ways that you are with us. God, we know that the year 2020 hasn't really gone how anyone wants it to. But God, we're grateful for all the ways that you showed up in the year 2020 throughout our lives. God, we ask that you be with us, you keep us healthy, you be with all of our families, and you bring us back next week. To your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
As always, I feel so blessed by the ministries of our team who makes worship happen every week from our choir and Dr. Michael Lindstrom and Ken Surley who lead our music ministries there, the music from Kevin and Krista Bailey and our P3 band, the message for Jack and Krista for our children and families and the work in ministry with Reverend Audra Welch Malvez, our associate pastor, and always the work that goes on so often behind the scenes in our office from Carol Jones and Kathy Bongfeldt and Judy Lawrence that keeps our church running and the ministries that we do so effective. And so I hope you join me in giving thanks for them. And I would be remiss not to also thank Tom Rubeck, who puts this service together and is so generous in sharing his gifts with our church family. We give God thanks for you, Tom. Now we turn our hearts and attention to the scripture from Matthew today. And that journey of the Magi, sometimes called the wise men, who followed a star to find where God was entering incarnate, word made flesh in this world to bring glory to a newborn king. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote, You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went. And look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God of love and God of grace, this is your time and we are your people. Open our hearts, our minds, and our lives to your presence that we would receive your word and respond with all that we are. Amen. This story of the Magi following a star is one of the more fantastical moments in the birth of Christ. Now we see it Memorialized in all of our nativities, yes, uh, usually the Holy Family sits centered beautifully with Mary and Joseph lovingly looking down and adoring the newborn infant who's wrapped not necessarily in swaddling clothes, but usually some golden and white linen blankets. And then very nice and neat to one side of that, we have a gaggle of shepherds, usually very adorable, like precious, uh, precious moments, artwork or figurines. Maybe some cherubs flying above, uh, reminding us of that moment in Luke 2 we heard on Christmas Eve, uh, showing up to the shepherds and bringing them into praise. And then we see in that same hallmark moment, with all the beautiful cinematography around it, balanced on the other side, those three wise men, maybe a couple of camels or something that they were traveling on, and along with their crowns, and their treasure chests kneeling before the Christ child and giving their worship and their honor. Glory to this newborn king. Part of what we remember in this day that is set apart from Christmas is that the Magi were probably not there in that beautiful lineup that we see in so many nativity scenes. We probably had some moment of Mary and Joseph interrupted by shepherds or maybe a little drummer boy who we sing about, though he does not appear canonically in scripture. Probably every newborn mother's favorite thing to have, guests who were uninvited. But they come to bring worship and to see that God is doing something different here. 
But as we see in Matthew's gospel, which is somewhat different from Luke's, it may have been months later. In some cases, some scholars think it could have been years later. These magi, which doesn't necessarily mean kings. It could be folks who seek wisdom, folks who maybe study the stars. They come because they have seen something in the heavens and they want to participate in it because they see something transcendent is happening and they arrive and they come to give their glory and honor. Now, yes, I, I like the efficiency of our nativities that gives us the whole story and includes everybody. But in our liturgy, we know we have to wait for that arrival. We have to wait in that rhythm for all to come and be gathered around the Christ child. Now, I told you, I'm, I'm outside here. Not just because it's a new year and I wanted to try something a little different and crazy, but because for me, maybe you were like this too. Just maybe a couple weeks ago, right before Christmas Eve, this unique and special moment happened. And they called it the Bethlehem star. It wasn't exactly a star, but it was this alignment of Jupiter and Saturn right after sunset, about 45 minutes after. And I could see standing here on my back porch, just right there on the horizon behind me, standing here with my oldest daughter, Graham, this phenomenal moment of light where those planetary bodies were nearly in sync. It was breathtaking. It was breathtaking. Yeah, some scientists wonder, was this the planetary movement that these magi experienced? And did we get to step into the story alongside them to participate in the heavens moving in this transcendent way and helping us see something larger than ourselves? And to pause for just a few moments to stand in awe and to give God glory. I love that invitation of the Magi to focus outward, maybe to the grandest, the grandest way possible. In my holiday experience, I can sometimes be so wrapped up in did I get every gift on the list? Did we see every relative we needed to see in a non-pandemic time? Did we attend every function and every performance and every event? And so often I can live right here. So close to the end of my nose. What's that saying? You miss the forest for the trees? Maybe sometimes I miss all the ways that God might be moving in my world because I'm so focused on how I am trying to move through my world. God bless these wise ones. We don't know if they were only men. We don't know what countries they may have come from. These uh, names of uh, the kings who show up in our hymns and in our traditions come from much later. But we know that they had a broader view that zoomed out that didn't just look at what was in front of their faces, but looked, that looked at all of creation and said, something is moving here beyond us and is moving to meet us here. And so they journeyed. Can you imagine journeying over how many miles? It could have taken weeks, it could have taken months, it could have taken years. For them to look at the heavens and chart some pattern of movement and to follow it. Part of why I wanted to give this message at night under the stars is because I imagine they had to travel at night to follow the star. They had to journey through darkness across uncharted territory for them into new lands. Among new peoples into new encounters of unfamiliarity guided by this heavenly sign. When I think of this season of wrapping up the holidays and moving into a new year, 
I can think of a lot of unfamiliar territory right now, friends. We don't know what the coming year is going to hold. If you would have asked me a year ago my hopes and plans and thoughts for 2020, I can tell you my plans, my thoughts, the roadmap I thought I was following looked nothing like where 2020 ended up taking us. And sometimes it felt like I could just look to the heavens and say, God, I hope you're up there leading us. I hope you're here around us leading us because the roadmap isn't working anymore. My plans aren't working anymore. Have you ever taken a road trip during the holidays? I know my family would go at least a couple of hours on any Christmas day from whether it was our home in Palestine where I was growing up back to the Dallas area to see my grandparents in Plano or Richardson, or whether it was to see family or friends who lived in other places over time. Sometimes it felt like the journey wasn't going to end. Now I'm blessed with a smaller version of myself and a child who can ask those questions I asked so many times. Are we there yet? How much longer? When will we know that we're going to get there? Is it going to be good when we get there? Are we there yet? How many times have you and I asked in 2020, are we there yet? We celebrate good news of vaccines and yet we know we're not there yet for every person being made whole. We celebrate progress and discoveries during this pandemic that help keep us safe, that help keep us whole. And yet we know it's an incomplete picture still. We await that homecoming. But friends, we don't journey alone. <laughs> much like I had my parents and my brother riding in the car with me, much like I have my spouse and my two daughters in the car with me when we're trying to get somewhere now. We travel the road together. I think it's a beautiful thing that the Magi travel in community. Even to an unexpected place, they do not journey alone. Also, they look to that light of God around them and are guided by God saying, God is with us in that light and God is with us in the child they will encounter. But it isn't always just a happy journey. You know they arrive to greet Herod who in some people's eyes was a pretender to the throne. He had an altered, uh, somewhat fictionalized family tree that made him seem more in line with King David than he truly was. He actually is an Edomite through the line of Esau, but he's a cousin to the Jewish people. And so that was good enough for the Roman Empire for him to sit on the throne. And imagine being someone who has the title King of the Jews, at the end of someone's journey being asked, where's the newborn king? And Herod <laughs> wasn't planning on having uh, a child replace him yet, wasn't planning on giving up the throne anytime soon. This was not where his journey was supposed to go. He says, excuse me? Hold on, let me talk to my people real quick and see how I can help you. And it becomes revealed that maybe God is doing something different in King Herod's story than he thought. And maybe God is doing something in the Magi's story than they thought. They thought they were going to come and meet this ruling king who is bringing justice and shepherding people and said instead they meet someone else. It makes me think emotionally of maybe the worst road trip I've ever had in my life. I spent a summer studying abroad between my junior and senior year of college. And it was a great experience. I got to spend a couple of months living in Rome in Italy. But one weekend, some of my roommates decided we got to take a quick trip to Venice. We can take one of those high speed rail trains to get to Venice in maybe a couple of hours. We'll have a full day on Saturday. And then we'll get up first thing in the morning and we'll take one of those affordable European airlines back home. And we'll be back in Rome by lunch on Sunday. Friends, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. One person in our apartment slept in too late, so we didn't catch the first train out. We catched the third train out, and we didn't get to spend the whole day in Venice. We got to spend basically lunch until dinner. And then the campsite that 
one of the other friends in our party booked wasn't just right next to Venice like we were told. It was an hour and a half bus ride outside of Venice. So after frantically getting onto a train and frantically trying to find our way around Venice and see as many sights as we could in a day and frantically catching a bus and getting to a campsite at almost one in the morning, knowing we had to get up again to take that same bus ride back at seven in the morning. We looked around exhausted and thought, wow, I'm not sure this was worth it. I'm not sure that the sights were worth it. And at insult to injury, the next morning when we got up, we made the bus to the airport, but one of my companions forgot their passport and we could not get on the plane for which we had tickets. And so then we had to wait for another bus to take us to another train to take us back to Rome. And we thankfully were back in time to hit the bed and sleep it off, knowing that a new day was on the other side. I imagine the Magi thinking of everything that went wrong in their journey. I imagine Mary and Joseph thinking of everything that went wrong in their journey. I imagine Herod thinking of everything that was about to go wrong in his journey. So much of where I see that light in the heavens turning into the light among us is in how each person in the story responds to what happens around them. You know, my my friends and I on this crazy trip where everything went wrong, we were exhausted, we were frustrated, but we also decided that we were in it together and I have some lifelong friends out of that. That was part of the response of what we were going to do with that terrible experience. In our families, it may be that the holidays sometimes are really difficult or that to close one year that was full of a lot of pain and grief feels impossible to open a new chapter in a year ahead. Our choice and our response to these difficult things, to the heartache, to the heartbreak, to who is around us, that may set the tone for where we experience God's grace, where we experience God's light and God's hope. Now we can be like Herod and respond with fear and with anger, and to lash out at the things that are working against us. Herod goes on from this to do atrocious things, to seek the lives of innocent children, and to cause Jesus and his parents to become refugees and immigrants in a foreign land, seeking refuge from horrible violence in their homeland against them. We could be like the wise men who show up and still say, even though this wasn't what we expected, we still seek the truth and we still seek to bring glory and seek the light and to follow it. We can be like Mary and Joseph who still choose care for their child and hope for their road ahead, even if it is a mystery to them. And like Luke tells us, that Mary holds these things in her heart and ponders them. Friends, I hope in the unknown of this season, we know God is not calling us towards the fear and anger and lashing out of Herod, but to the generosity of spirit, the generosity of love, the generosity to give like those magi, to be present like Mary and Joseph, to seek that light and that hope. Yes, we talk about it. Do no harm, do good, attend to the love of God. John Wesley puts it that way, but Jesus said to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. I don't know what the next year holds, but I know that the light is still shining. And I know that God still calls us to follow. Maybe it is like those stars in the heavens that we look to for that transcendent awe. And maybe it is in the faces of those around us, in our homes, in our church family, in the neighborhood where we live, to say you are not alone. I pray that's the spirit to which we will respond. Friends, I know it's becoming a cliche probably, but for me this takes root so much, not just in the ideas that we talk about from scripture, but sometimes in the poetry of what can happen in a song and When I think of looking to the heavens, 
When I think of following God's star in the sky that led magi across the world to the Christ child, I, I think of this song from an artist named David Crowder. And it invites us to look to the stars and find hope. You should see the stars tonight How they shimmer, shine so bright Against the black they look so white Coming down from such a height To reach me now You reach me now you should see the moon in flight Cutting across the misty night Softly dancing in sunshine Reflections of its light Reach me now Reach me now How could such a thing Shine its light on me And make everything Beautiful again You should feel the sun in spring Coming out after a rain Suddenly all is green light on everything I can feel it now I can feel you now How could such a thing shine its light on me and make everything beautiful you should hear sing all gathered around their king more beautiful than you could dream I've been quietly listening you can hear them now you can hear them now yeah Such a king shine his light on me and make everything beautiful. And I wanna shine, I wanna be the light just to tell you now that it'll be alright. And I wanna shine and I wanna fly just to tell you everything will be alright. I've got nothing on my own to give to you Except this light that shines on me That shines on you It makes everything beautiful again It'll be alright. It'll be alright. It'll be alright. Amen. We respond to the word that we've heard by affirming our faith, by making a proclamation that this is what we believe and this is what carries us through. Will you join me now? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, 
in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Every time we gather, we follow a pattern in our worship of gathering, entering a space, lifting our praises, even from our homes, hearing the word read and proclaimed from scripture, and then responding before we are sent out to be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. Your generosity in response to the word proclaimed, in response to God moving with us, incarnate, being life and light and hope, your generosity makes it possible for our ministries to continue. The practical ways you do that are through giving online or offering through mail your donations for the financial support for our church. You can also text to give as well. And it's also in those estimates of giving that prepare our ministries for this new year together. We'll approve our budget in a couple of weeks, so look out for more information on that. But friends, it isn't just filling in a spreadsheet. It isn't only paying bills. It is transformative relationships. That every dollar you give turns into tangible love that looks like worship, that looks like discipleship through Bible studies over Zoom, that looks like our parking lot services, that looks like the mission and outreach we do through our food pantry or through our partnerships with groups like Many Helping Hands and the Irving Schools Foundation and so many more. It is you who brings that light in the darkness in so many ways, and I'm so grateful for that. So will you pray with me as we have this moment of prayerfully considering our response to God's work and word in our lives. Holy God, you are good and all that we have and all that we are comes from you. We give our offerings to you, but truly, Lord, we give them as a sign of offering our lives to you, that you might transform us, that you might transform your world through the lives we lead. In the ways that we have been blessed, may we be a blessing reflecting your light in the darkness, your hope to all people. Amen.
We go from this place to a new year with some of the same struggles that we've carried with us through 2020, but following the light of Christ. As I sang earlier, I hope it will be all right. But I believe God is with us and we are never alone. May our response bear witness to that light and that hope that our hands and feet may bring the light of Christ wherever we are living. May that be so in the name of God who creates us, Christ who makes us whole, and the Holy Spirit who sustains us in this work of life and ministry we share together. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.